Hi everyone and welcome to the final painting videos of 2020. Today we're looking at the Peter Cushing head from Doctor Who and the Daleks and let's get painting it. So here is the Peter Cushing head. I did mention in a previous video I paid for this 3D model and I printed it myself. Then I made some tweaks to the actual face, added the moustache and I changed the hairstyle slightly. This is actually a resin cast. I've now molded this and uh, pressure cast it with resin. So if you're after one of these heads, keep an eye out on my eBay store or if you're part of the Facebook group, Doctor Who Toys and Figures, Discussions, News and Rumors. I think I've got it right there. Um, you can contact me directly through that group and um, purchase from me through PayPal. So without further ado guys, we need to move on to the painting. So let's give this head a base coat. Uh, I'm gonna go for like a, a teal color, like the color of your veins, uh, because apparently that's a good idea to start with that. So let's give it a go. So I can't for the life of me remember where I got this idea from of painting the skin with this bluey greeny colour. I remember someone mentioning it that mentioning it that it was a a really good base colour for flesh. So I'm gonna give it a go and to be honest with you I'm probably gonna do it wrong. I'm just gonna make this one up as I go because I'm not the best at painting flesh or uh, humanoid skin colours. So um don't expect this to be anything off the scale. It's just like a beginner's tutorial, I guess, for anyone who's never tried painting before. This is just something to help you get started. So our teal layer has dried and he is looking like Grand Admiral Thrawn. So a lot of these colors that I'm mixing up for this are well, yeah, color, my own colours, so I don't really have any recommendations as such, apart from a lot of these colours are from Model Colour, uh, which is a Vallejo branded paint. So, um, if you're after some paints, or don't know which ones to get, I'd highly recommend going for these, which can be picked up on eBay. And you might be thinking, what the hell is he doing? But, um, I'm now just pinpointing all the areas on the head that tend to be a little bit more of a rosy red. So, let's begin applying this fleshy colour to the rest of the face. I've mixed a little bit of, I think it's called Pale Corpse, in with the, the rosy flesh colour. And we're just gonna dab it on and we'll stretch it so it covers a lot more of the face. and becomes quite thin, a thin coat, that's what I'm after. So I'm gonna do this all over the head and then we'll see how it looks. And this is what he looks like once you've blotted on that, uh, that flesh coat. Uh, it's a little bit pinky in real life, don't know how much it's showing up on the camera. So the next stage is to mix a little bit more of this, ah, this is what it's called, corpse pale. So we build up the colours ever so slightly and we make sure we blot on so we we don't make we don't brush it in strokes, we rather we dab at it so that it gives you a more realistic sort of finish. So I've lightened up the paint and I'm now going to dab on this high area on his forehead with the as I say the ever so slightly lighter fleshy colour. 
and uh, it's actually looking quite good. I'm very, very, very critical of my own painting, so if this is something that I approve of once it's done, that is going to be a miracle. And here he is. Now it's important to leave that pinky tone around the eyes and ears and nose a little bit because it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. So now we are going to go back into the face with a bit of that pinky colour just to highlight the cheeks which have kind of disappeared. Now luckily I did leave the the pinky tones in my little mixing pot uh, so in an order so you've still got a little bit of the pinky left there and then I've added a bit and moved it to one side so all the tones are still there just in case you do need to go back and uh, just uh, you know just highlight the cheeks a bit like this and make sure it's really in a dabby motion again so it doesn't look too unrealistic and even just dab with your finger just to move it around a bit if you want to and uh, as you can see it kind of creates a speckly veiny look which the skin has so before we go into the eyes I thought I'd paint the moustache and the hair with some dungeon grey. I ended up giving the hair and moustache two coats of the grey and I'm now, I've lightened up the grey slightly and I'm gonna give it a slight dry brush just to bring out all the textures of the strands, all the nooks and crannies, the weavings whatever you might want to call it. So once you've highlighted all of the hair, the moustache, we can now move on to the eyes. Now I'm going to do my very best to show you how I paint eyes and uh, it's going to be quite tricky uh, because of <laughs> I've got a camera in front of me but um, I've taken some white and a very tiny brush and I'm just gonna do my best to apply it over the eyeball like so and uh, try and be tidy about it if uh, if it's not as tidy uh, if it's similar to mine which isn't very tidy don't worry too much because you can clean that up at the end now I did just do these off camera because you really need to bring the head right up to your face and get this brush right in there I wasn't too sure what colour to do his iris, it looks like a washed out green, maybe a washed out blue. I've decided to go with the washed out green. Now to apply the iris, I am dabbing a cocktail stick into some paint, which I've pre-mixed. And then all you do is you pick up your head, and again I'm going to try and do this on camera. It's going to be very tricky, but you just dab like so. Gosh, I'm shaking. And uh, there you have an iris. Now, I did go back in with the toothpick just to make the iris a little bit bigger so we've got enough room to put the pupil. So, here we go. But to finish up, I always find it's nice to add a little tiny white speck to the side of the pupil, just to give it the impression that it's sparkling or reflecting. And here is my finished Peter Cushing head. Now, I must admit, I'm not that happy with it. But again, it's just purely because I'm, I'm not very good at painting humanoid heads. It's just not something that, uh, that I really practiced enough. However, if you're just starting out, I think you'd be thrilled with this. So if I've helped in any way, then at least that's made my day. But um, 
apologies again if this video has been a little bit hectic and uh, random, but uh, I'll make sure that I improve on the uh, Terraleptor painting video, which I'm about to record. I'm going to shuffle things around and uh, make sure that everything's a little bit more uh, sleeker and uh, precise. And uh, so yeah, join me then for the next video. And uh, thank you for watching this one. And do let me know if you uh, do paint up one of these Peter Cushing heads, as I'd love to see. So till next time, guys, take care.